Hello, class. Today we are going to continue on Chapter Four, Fundamentals of Statistics. So here's the outline for Chapter Four, and what we are going to cover today is the measures of central tendency, and specifically today we are going to cover one part of the measures of central tendency, that is the average. So last time we talked about frequency distribution histogram, and data can be described by frequency distribution as well as measures of central tendency and measures of dispersion. So there are three uh, measures of central tendency, average, medium, and mode. So there are three different techniques available for calculating the average. And um, essentially, they are the same. It's just because the data is presented to us in different forms. So we need to use different type of techniques. So the three techniques are ungrouped data, group data, and weighted average. So here is the formula for ungrouped data average. And you must be familiar with this equation, I think you may already know or have done some of the calculations of average. So the average is denoted as x bar, and it is defined as the sum of all the data points divided by the total number of data points. So I want to uh, introduce this symbol, this capital sigma, in the uh, Greek letter, which means sum of. So if the n is very large, um, it's not uh, preferable to write the expansion of all the x1 until xn. So we use uh, this sigma sign, and the lower bound says what is the starting point of the i, and then the upper bound says the ending point of i. So i is from 1 to n, and then you sum up all the x i. Therefore, it is the same as saying x1 plus x2 plus um, dot 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 until x n. So here's a numerical example. Uh, we tested the resistance of five coins, and um, it is recorded in the unit of ohms. So here are our five readings. 3.35, 3.37, 3.28, 3.34, and 3.30. So the x1 through x5 stands for our data points. And when you are computing the average, the x bar, it equals to the sum of all these data points divided by the number of data points, which is 5. So you just sum up these 5 readings and divide it by 5 and the result is 3.33. So we keep three significant digits, the same as our input. And this five is a counting number, so it has infinite accuracy. For grouped data, we use this formula to compute the average. So H, this H, is the number of cells or a number of classes that has been grouped, and xi is the midpoint of cell i, and fi stands for the frequency of cell i. So you just use the sum of production of fi xi as the enumerator, and then the sum of the frequency, the sum of all frequencies as the denominator. So this n equals to f1 plus f2 up to fh. So here is our steel shaft weight example. This is the histogram that we draw for the steel shaft weight. So we define, uh, we divided our um, data into nine classes, right? So the h equals to nine. And we take the midpoint of each class as our xi. X6, X7, X8, X9. 
and to plug into the formula we use x1 the 2.533 times f1 6 so the height of this bar of the first class or first cell is 6 right so this is the frequency that is associated with the first class and then the second class we use the midpoint x2 2.538 times the frequency of the second cell which is 8 if you can read from the scale this is 8 so we go on this way and until the last class the ninth class so we can find the sum of fi times xi and in our denominator this is 110 this is the total number of data points so if you sum up all the frequencies that will give you the same number 110 so this equals to 6 plus 8 plus 12 plus 13 plus 20 plus 19 plus 13 plus 11 and plus 8 so now we compute the average for the grouped data as 2.554 Here is an, another example of the grouped data. So we have the frequency distribution of the life of 320 tires. You can see the first three columns should look familiar to you because this is just the frequency distribution of grouped data. The first column defines the boundaries in each class. The second column finds the um, midpoint in each class. Right? So you just take the average of the lower bound and upper bound in each class, and that's the midpoint of the class. And the third column records the frequency of each class. Okay. So now, to compute the average for grouped data, what we need to do is to do the computation of fi times xi. Right? So now you use this column times this column. So f1 times x1 is 4 times 25.0, that gives us 100. 36 times 28 gives us 1008. 51 times 31 gives us 1581. So you go along this way and then you can find the fi times xi for all the nine classes. Right. It is also divided into nine classes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this H value is nine. And then when we're computing the X bar, we use the sum of Xi times Xi, which is recorded here. One, one, five, four, nine. And then divided by the sum of the frequency, 320. So as you can see, the sum of all the frequencies in, in all the classes will be equal to the number of data points, the total number of data points. So we use 11549 divided by 320, and we can find the average is 36.1, which is uh, in this class. This formula is also useful if you already have the frequency distribution of ungrouped data. So the, the ungrouped, ungrouped data will be classified into uh, different classes which can be enumerated. So we only have like one integer value for each class. And therefore, th this xi is just the value of class i. So you do not need to find midpoint because there is only one value in each class. And H still stands for number of classes, and FI stands for frequency of class I. So let's have uh, an example. So this is the num number of daily billing errors. We have used this example several times. This is our raw data. So we just collect uh, the daily billing errors for 52 days. And if you view this data as ungrouped data, then we can use our average formula for the ungrouped data, then you just sum up 
all these 52 data points. So here, this xi stands for the ungrouped data points and divided by the total uh, number of data points. So the enumerator will look like 0 plus 1 plus 3 plus 0 plus 1 and until the end, plus 2 plus 2 plus 3 and then divided by 52. So we got the average as 1.31. Now, if we already summarize the frequency distribution of this ungrouped data, then we know the frequency in each class. So each class has only one value in it, right? This is the xi, this is the xi for the grouped data. So if we want to use the formula for the grouped data, then we use the sum of the six classes, the sum of the, the six classes of fi times xi. So now I use 15, the frequency, times the class value xi times 0, plus this 20 the frequency of class 1 times 1, okay, times the value of the class i. So you go on this way, and then we can find the enumerator as the sum of fi times xi, and then the uh, denominator is the sum of frequencies. So the 15 plus 20 plus 8 plus 5 plus 3 plus 1, which will give you 52 as well. And then you can see that the result is 1.31. So they gives you the same answer and they are consistent with, with each other. So the group that, uh, using the grouped formula can help us save some efforts if we have a lot of data. So for example, like um, the class 3, has a frequency of five. That means there are five days that is having three daily billing errors. So what we write here in the ungrouped data is three plus three plus three plus three plus three, plus three for five times. So three will occur five will occur five times in this um, enumerator. And in the grouped formula, we just use five times three, right? You use the frequency times the value of this class. So, so therefore, essentially, these two formula gives you the same answer. Um, they are just computing the same average. The third type of techniques to find average is called weighted average. So this method is used when a number of averages are combined with different frequencies. So the xi bar stands for the f average, and the wi stands for the weight of the f average. So when you are using the weight times the average of the i times the i average, and then divided by the total weight, that gives us the weighted average, x bar w. So here's an example. We have performed several tensile tests on aluminum alloy rods, and we take three at three different occasions. So on the first occasion, five tests are performed with an average of 207. And on the second occasion, six tests were performed with an average of 203. And on the last occasion, three tests was uh, are performed with an average of 206. So I wanted to determine the weighted average. And to plug it into the formula, we can see that um, there are three occasions, right? So the sum here should be three. And then we use the weight, which we use the number of tests as the weight for each occasion, and, and, and then times the average in each occasion, right? So we use five times 207, plus 6 times 203, and plus 3 times 206, and divided by 5 plus 6 plus 3, the sum of the weight. And that gives us an average of 205. So how shall we interpret the weighted average? Let's see. For the first set of tests, the first occasion, we tested for five times, but we don't know the specific 
readings of each test. We just know that the average of the first five tests is 207, right? So I use x1, x2, x3, x4, x5 as the first five readings. And the sum of this xi from 1 to 5 divided by 5 will be equal to 207. And then in, on the second occasion, we tested six times. So x6 through x11 will stand for, will stand for the data points in the second occasion. Again, I don't know the exact value of x6 through x11. And then I use the sum of these six data points divided by six will give me the 203, which is the average on the second occasion. And similarly, on the third occasion, we have three data points divided by three, and the average is 206. So now, if you go back to see what is this weighted average look like, then on the enumerator, that's the 5 times 207, plus 6 times 203, and plus 3 times 206. So 5 times 207 is, is just the same as the sum of xi's from 1 to 5, right? So 5 times 207 is equivalent to x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 plus x5. And similarly, the 6 times 203 is the sum of data points uh, from 6 to 11, right? From x6 to x11. And 3 times 206 is the same as the sum of xi uh, using the i from 12 to 14. And uh, the denominator is the sum of the weight, which is the total number of data points we have, right? 14. So now you can see that this is just the same as the ungrouped average. So what I'm saying is that the different techniques to compute the average is essentially computing the same average. So why we're using different techniques is because uh, the data will be presented to us in different formats or different types. For example, in this case, we don't know the we don't know the specific value of each xi, so we cannot apply this formula directly. But when you know the weight and also the average of a subset of your tests, the weight of each subset and also the average of each subset, then we can find the average using this weighted average formula. Okay, so that's all for today's lecture. Bye-bye.